Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Gaudete in Domino Semper Iterum Dico Gaudete Words taken from the, and the introit for the Mass for today. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Today is known as Gaudete Sunday and welcome to St Edmund's as we celebrate the third Sunday in Advent. Gaudete means rejoice and that's why we're allowed a bit of relaxation today. The altar frontal is no longer deepest purple. My vestments are no longer deepest purple. They're rose, rose pink. So we're allowed a little bit of relaxation today. And it's obviously the time to light our third candle and it's the pink one. And today it's for John the Baptist. So ask Mother Helen to do that. Jesus said no one, is more, no one more important than John the Baptist has ever been born, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. He will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, 
we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people from whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. My brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. 
for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one, among whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Those first words of today's Gospel tell us everything that we need to know about John the Baptist. He was sent to give testimony. 
He was the first one sent to proclaim the presence of Christ. John was the first one to give testimony to the truth of Christ among us. He realised that divine truth had entered the world as a human being. There was no time to hedge the tr on the truth. John would rather die than turn from the truth. And he did die, a martyr to the truth. Like John the Baptist, we also have been called to be witnesses. We've been entrusted with a mission from God. We are created for a purpose. We were given God's life at baptism so we can share his life with others. We are his witnesses. We're called to make the presence of Christ a reality in our world by giving witness to his presence in our own lives. How do we do that? Well, let me tell you about an elderly couple I heard about in China. They were both doctors and they'd met whilst they were studying together at medical school. They fell in love and they married. She was a Christian, he wasn't. And she wanted to convince him that he should join the church, but he just wouldn't get baptised. Shortly after they married, they had a son. But during one of the political movements in China, the husband was arrested along with a number of other intellectuals and sent to a labour camp. Well, the wife struggled with this separation because she had to work long hours at the hospital during the day and then care for her son at night. And as well as being lonely, she was being pressurised by the government to divorce her husband and renounce her religion so she could get political adv advantages. She refused. Every night, she knelt down with her son and prayed, asking for strength from God to cope with her difficulties. In the late 1970s, she heard that her husband and other intellectuals were going to be released and allowed to come home. And when that day came, she and her son went to the railway station to meet her husband. They were the only family members there to meet the men. All the other women had been unable to put up with the long separation, and they'd all divorced and remarried. The husband was deeply moved by this, and immediately took instruction, and was later baptised. That woman bore witness to the light just as truly as John the Baptist did. And now it's our turn. For many people in the world today, Christ has become a very distant and dim figure. The words in today's Gospel are literally true. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Christ still needs witnesses today. People who can make him present to others. Spiritually speaking, people are living in a world of darkness. Some of you may recognise the words to the Simon and Garfunkel song from the 1970s called The Sound of Silence. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. An accurate description of how many people feel today. They're living in spiritual darkness. They're in need of spiritual illumination, a divine light. I'm sure most of you will, hear, will have heard of Helen Keller, who was an American author, a political activist and a lecturer. She was both deaf and blind. And she was the first deaf-blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. And she had an amazing teacher called Anne Sullivan, who taught her to communicate. And in her autobiography, Helen Keller tells of that dramatic moment when Anne Sullivan first broke through her dark, silent world with the illumination of language. Let me read it to you. We walked down the path to the well house, 
attracted by the fragrance of the honeysuckle with which it was covered. Someone was drawing water and my teacher placed my hand under the spout. As the cool stream gushed over one hand, she spelled into the other the word water, first slowly, then rapidly. I stood still, my whole attention fixed upon the motion of her fingers. Suddenly, I felt a misty consciousness, as of something forgotten, a thrill of returning thought. And somehow, the mystery of language was revealed to me. I knew then that W-A-T-E-R meant that wonderful cooling something that was flowing over my hand. That living word awakened my soul, gave it light, hope, joy, set it free. The moment that Helen Keller describes is that moment her world of darkness was shattered with the light of language. Although she was the same person physically, her life was transformed. She now had a way she could see and understand. Bringing people to Christ is equally transformative. But we can't, bring, we can't be witnesses to the light if we're living in darkness ourselves. Do our lives shine with that light? Do we put Christ first in our lives? Or do we only switch the light on here on a Sunday morning? When our religious practice leads to good deeds, then that is a strong and effective witness. When religious practice is divorced from life, then a vital element is missing. And the task of witnessing is not only for one, one for individual Christians, but for the Christian community as a whole. That's why we need to be a community of worshippers, so we can grow together as Christians, help to strengthen and support each other's faith, and become confident Christians who, can, who are comfortable witnesses to the light that is Christ. Without that witness of Christians, the face of Christ, which is already blurred, will continue to fade from the world. He will continue to stand among us as unknown and unrecognised. And hearts will be, remain broken, and people will remain imprisoned in darkness, and the good news will not be preached to the poor. So let's pray that God will give us the strength and commitment to be like John the Baptist, testifying to the light, so that all might believe through us. Amen. So now let us profess our faith and the faith of the Church in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, help us in our daily lives to be a voice proclaiming the good news of Jesus and to pray, prepare prayerfully for his coming again. We pray your church will be a beacon of light to all people and welcome the needy and the stranger this Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all parishes in the Diocese of London, for all ordained and lay ministers getting ready for the business Christmas se busy Christmas season. Guide our Archbishop Justin, Bishop Sarah and Pete, and Archdeacon Catherine in their responsibilities and leadership roles. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for scientists who have developed vaccines as a means to end the COVID pandemic. We pray that lower income countries will not be forgotten as the vaccine is rolled out and inequalities in healthcare will be addressed by the world community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for wisdom for our government as difficult decisions are being made about our country's future. Grant discernment to our local politicians in Hillingdon and Harrow to serve the interests of all residents. We pray for all who live in our parish, for local shops and hospitality venues, serving customers under difficult conditions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask for your blessing upon Jolene Gomberoom, Ruth Luck, and all who celebrate birthdays this coming week. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are in hospital at this time, especially from COVID-19 and patients in intensive care units. Strengthen all medical, nursing and support staff coping with the pressure of winter admissions. In our parish, we pray for Mohammed Alibi, Anne Andrews, Father Tony Andrews, Amy Austin, Bala Nishanti and Joash Balakumar, Sheila Borna, Luana Cheng, Charlie Davis, Ethan Diggins, Barbara Fairclough, Kay Fletcher, Betty Glass, Iris Golding, Darren Hale, Margaret Messenger, Lee Morgan, Suzanne Nichols, Alwyn Orr, Marjorie Richards, Joan Ricks, Ian Roberts, Penny Sherville, Ros Sheeran, Rita Thompson, Harold Talbot, Anne Warwick, Jack Warwick, Eileen Worley, Derek Wilkins, Julie Windsor, Nora Wood, 
Alan Yates, Graham Yates, Bob Young, Kathy Young. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the lives of Heidi Chalk, jo Joyce McLaughlin Williams, and Eileen Izard, who have died recently. Comfort all who mourn with the knowledge their loved ones now rest in your peace. We also remember in your presence Derek Barnwell, Doreen Mitchell, and Isaac Gamsey, whose anniversaries occur this week, praying for all who have died in the faith of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the tender mercy of God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. Lord our God, as your servant John the Baptist prepared the way for the coming of your Son, make us your servants ready for his coming in these holy mysteries, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world, to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Edmund, the Apostles, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Jesus Christ, we thank you for the mercy of your body, take your blood, and help me make condemnation to the house of my life. Body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. Body of Christ, bring me to everlasting
We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out into the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated. Can I just say thank you to all who've responded to the stewardship renewal program. There is still time to return your pledge forms. Even if you can't join the scheme or if you can't increase or change what you're giving, it would be really helpful so that we know we haven't missed anyone out or something's not got lost in the post for you to return those, please. Um, they are placed on the altar each week as they come in um, as a thanks. The thanks is, sounds as if my microphone went off, the thanks is for actually reviewing and also for the generosity that you all have shown. I have no idea what the figures are but I'm told that there are a number of one-off donations so that's very good and thank, thank you for that. A reminder that if you would like to come to the carol service, the crib service, or midnight mass, you must ring Jenny. I understand you haven't had many phone calls, is that right, Jenny? Not too many. Not too many. So there's still place. But as I said in my letter this week, book early to avoid disappointment. It would be awful if people had to be turned away. So please do book for those services. Hopefully you'll have noticed as you came in the, I never know whether this is a tree of life, tree of lights, light of whatever, the Christmas tree in the foyer at which you are invited to put names of departed loved ones on. Unfortunately we can't allow you to do that yourself for um, obvious reasons, so if you'd like a name to go on there then please ring Marjorie. Her details are in the newsletter this week, as are Jenny's details so that if you haven't booked your place or you haven't given your details to Marjorie to hang on the tree, then please do so. The Eucharist will be celebrated this week on Tuesday at 6pm, Wednesday at 6pm, Thursday at 10am. Thursday will, be, will not be on YouTube, it will be on Zoom. So you need to book into Zoom. So it'll be more of a, a virtual congregation. I will able to be able to see little bits of you on there. So please get there early so you know what go what's going on. And that immediately is followed by the coffee morning. So there's no wait. Friday the Eucharist is at 11 and Saturday at 10.30. And the next Sunday is the fourth Sunday in Advent, the last Sunday of Advent, Eucharist at, Parish Eucharist at 10 and the carol service at 4. Is it? Oh right, 6.30. I would have been here very early for that. I thought we had it at 4. I don't know why 4 stuck in my mind. I'm glad I said that, so now I know. I'd have been wondering where everyone was. Have a great week. Do please stay safe. We're coming across a number of people who are being tested positive but have no symptoms, which just shows the danger of the virus. I know of at least five people who are suffering, who are positive but not having any symptoms. So be careful. We don't want our congregation depleted. On that happy note, would you please stand for the parish prayer and blessing.
O Eternal Father, help us to build up the church in this parish to the glory of your name, in honour of St Edmund, and for the hope and inspiration of all your people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.